Hello everyone, welcome back to Epic Future Space. My name is Space Mike, and today is the first installment of From the Ground Up, where I talk about projects that are still in the test phase that are on their way to space. For this first installment, especially in light of recent news, I wanted to talk about SpaceX's Falcon 9 reusable test program. Essentially, the goal of this program is to allow their rockets, the Falcon 9 rocket, to be 100% reusable. So far, their main focus has been making the first stage reusable. The test program was officially announced in September of 2011, and since then they built their Grasshopper suborbital rocket, which has flown eight times and done some very awesome things. Although the Grasshopper test program is officially over as a technology demonstrator, their success has already been implemented on recent and future flights. The Grasshopper rocket progressively achieved higher goals during the eight successful flights that it made. Its first flight was in September of 2012 and was just a mere three second hop. Its second flight in November of 2012 flew for eight seconds and reached a height of 5.4 meters. In December 2012, on its third flight, it reached a height of 40 meters. And then doubled that in March 2013, reaching an altitude of 80 meters. The very next month, in April 2013, it went 250 meters. And then its sixth flight, in June 2013, went 325 meters. <laughs> and then, in August 2013, it reached an altitude of 250 meters and made a 100 meter lateral movement before making a soft touchdown. And then for its eighth and final flight in October of 2013, it reached the altitude of 744 meters before making a soft touchdown on the ground. Now, the Grasshopper rocket was essentially the first stage of the Falcon 1 rocket, and like the Falcon 1, was only powered by one engine. The main difference obviously being the landing legs that were attached to the Grasshopper. Now, even though the Grasshopper is retired, SpaceX has revealed their plans for two follow-on vehicles that will be used in their Falcon 9 reusable test program. The first vehicle, which they are flying currently, is called the Falcon 9R for reusable, Dev-1, Development-1. For the Falcon 9 reusable Dev-1 test vehicle, it is based on the first stage of the Falcon 9 version 1.1, which features the octagonal pattern or configuration of engines with a central engine in the middle, as opposed to version 1.0 configuration. The Dev-1 vehicle has already flown two times, and although it features nine engines like the Falcon 9 rocket, it seems that only the one central engine is being used. So far, anyway. The first flight of the Dev-1 vehicle was on April 17, 2014, and reached an altitude of 250 meters with lateral movement. Aside from having nine engines, the upgrade from the Dev-1 from the Grasshopper is not only a greater diameter and greater height, but 
the landing legs are now retractable. And these retractable landing legs have already been featured on two Falcon 9 flights, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Its second and most recent flight was on May 1st, 2014, and reached an altitude of 1,000 meters with lateral movement before coming down on the path, completely beating Grasshopper's record. SpaceX has many more flights planned for the Dev-1 and their follow-on the Dev-2 vehicle, and they're launching these from McGregor, Texas, but they will also be launching from Spaceport America in New Mexico, so I think that's a really good team-up that could hopefully see very good things in the future. Now back to these retractable landing legs, these landing legs have already been flown on two Falcon 9 rockets. Falcon 9 Flight 6 which was also the first flight for this new version 1.1 configuration, delivered the Cassiope satellite and these retractable landing legs worked correctly. Not only that, but there was enough fuel left over in the first stage that they were able to do a controlled descent. Unfortunately, once they reached a certain level of the atmosphere, they lost control because their maneuver thrusters just weren't strong enough, or they might not even have enough fuel. Whatever the case may be, they lost control and it, it unfortunately made a tumble into the ocean. On Flight 7, which was also the Commercial Resupply Services Flight 3, or CRS-3, delivering cargo to the International Space Station, that rocket also featured the retractable landing legs, and this time made a completely controlled descent. Not only that, but they were able to counter all the wind forces and everything like that, better maneuvering thrusters, I'm sure, and they were able to hover above the ocean and make the first ocean soft touchdown of an orbital booster ever. Ever! That's a big deal! If that had landed on land, that would have, that would have landed safely and they could have recovered it. And they should have been able to recover this rocket as well, but unfortunately there was ocean swells and they weren't able to recover it, but they, they could have. They still could do ocean recovery in the future, but you know, I'm wondering what's the next step here? Be allowed to land on land somewhere? Do they need to get FAA licenses? Are they even ready for that? Will the FAA even approve something like that at this stage, or do they need to make uh, prove themselves a little bit more? We'll see, but in either case, this is, this is, this is a first for spaceflight ever. And this could, this could completely change everything. Not only will it do what Elon Musk has claimed to bring the cost down, and essentially the only thing that they have to pay for is maintenance, overhead, and fuel. <laughs> the cost of spaceflight could go down so much that not only does it become more affordable for governments and private agencies to do amazing things in space, but for your common everyday person to go to space as well. Yeah, it's awesome that some of the super rich out there can go on the Spaceship 2 from Virgin Galactic or the Lynx from x -Core. That's awesome, and I want to do one or both of those someday. But we could start going to private space stations like the Bigelow Space Stations or going to the ISS for super cheap. I mean, you can pay the Russians, I think the price is like $35 million for a, a, a commercial private citizen to go on the International Space Station. I think it's only for like a week or two. That could go way down. It could be like $3.5 million instead of $35. It could be like $350,000. The, oh, oh, my focus is not the business, so I don't know exactly, but just, just imagining how much more affordable everything regarding space life could be is just staggering. Oh, there's so many cool things that we can do. And SpaceX is doing them. SpaceX is pioneering them. If they are successfully able to do this and make all of their future rockets reusable after a certain point, what competition will they have? I mean, they are already in the league where they are competing with NASA, Roscosmos, and the Chinese Space Agency. There's not a whole lot of other companies that can compete with them right now. I know NASA, I mean, it's Lockheed and Boeing that essentially is, is, is their competition, but 
if they do this, and if they're successful with this, they're gonna blow Lockheed and Boeing out of the water. And that's scary. But it's also exciting, because if Lockheed and Boeing wanna stay alive, they're gonna have to get with it. They're gonna have to advance their technology. They might not necessarily do the same things. They might do other things way better. They, there's just the ripple effects from this of what SpaceX is doing right now will not only change the private com companies here in the USA, but all over the world. Spaceflight is gonna completely change. Spaceflight is gonna look so different 10 or 20 years from now, and I'm very excited for it. I'm looking forward to it a lot. Well, thank you for joining me as I talked about SpaceX's reusable program, and I hope you learned something and share my enthusiasm about what this could mean for spaceflight. Next time, I'm going to do an orbital update and talk in more detail about SpaceX's Falcon 9, Flight 6, Flight 7, their hardware, their payloads, and maybe talk a little bit about Flight 8 as well. Once again, thank you for joining me, and please, let me know what you think about this whole reusable program, and especially let me know what you think about my comments earlier about what this could mean for not only the government, but for Lockheed and Boeing as well. I'd really like to hear what you think about this. If you're so inclined, you can subscribe to this channel and get updates whenever I put out a new episode. And if you want to find me in other places, you can find me on Facebook, you can find me on Twitter. I think I have a Google Plus as well. <laughs> Obviously, I haven't managed that one very well. <laughs> Also, if you're interested, I've written and composed all the background music you've been hearing. And if you would like to hear more or get it for yourself, you can find it under my music pseudonym of Orbital Transit. I put all the links to all that stuff in the doobly-doo down below. And uh, yeah, I hope we can get a conversation here going. Well, <laughs> one more time, thank you for joining me. And I hope you had a great time. And I will see you guys next time. And until then, don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.